What's up guys, how you all doing? I'm Paul the Tech Giant and I'm finally back after a long deserved break and today we're going to be unboxing a TV and the TV that we're going to be unboxing today is this Philips 48 inch 800 series OLED with Ambilight. Now as usual what we're going to do is get the TV unpacked, look at all the supplied accessories, look at all the inputs and outputs, then we're going to get the TV up on the wall and I'm going to go through the setup process because I've never actually set up a Philips TV before. Then we take a look at all the menus and settings, then we test out the TV and of course that Ambilight. Now I'll also be testing out this TV in a separate video with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and some other tests with this TV and of course I will be doing my much respected best things about it video and of course the worst things about it video so make sure you are subscribed for those as always, I want to say a big thanks to the guys at box.co.uk who are kind enough to send over this TV for testing. And if you'd like to pick up one of these TVs or something else, if that doesn't take your fancy, then please go and check out their link in the description. Now, many of the TVs from Box come with a free protection plan included. They offer free delivery and they price match all the major competitors. Plus, if you make a purchase from Box using my affiliate link, puts a few quid back in my pocket. So it's a win for you and a win for me. So plenty of good reasons to make your next purchase from Box. So please go and check out their link in the description. Right, let's crack on then. And the first thing that we're going to do is take a look around the outside of the box. And as we can see, this is the Philips television. I think they're stating the obvious there. 800 series, 48 inch or 121 centimeters, 4K UHD OLED, Android TV with Ambilight four-sided. Now for anyone who's wondering what Ambilight is, well quite simply it's lighting on the back of the TV that reacts to what is on the screen. So for an example, if you've got a football match playing, you've got the green of the grass, the lighting on the back of the TV will react to that, will change to green, and then we'll project that onto the walls around it. Right, moving on down then, and it says P5AI Intelligent Picture Engine, OLED, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. Great addition that. Android TV. Then we have the energy rating, and that comes in at an unhealthy G. And then finally, we have on the front of the box, it says Ambilight with an outline image of the TV with the stand as well. Next up, we're going to take some measurements of the box, which may come in handy if you want to transport the box maybe in the back of a car or just store it somewhere. First, starting off then with the depth of the box, and that comes in at approximately 15 centimetres or 6 inches. Next, let's do the length of the box, and that comes in at approximately 120 centimetres or 47 and a quarter inches. And finally, let's check out the height, and that comes in at 77 centimetres or 30 and a quarter inches. Right, next up, we need to get this box open. Only a small one, so got a small knife today, not my uh, big predator knife. Right then, so what do we have? Right, so it looks like we've got a quick start guide there and another piece of paper. Power cable, a few accessories there, looks like a do to do with the stand. Little box there, God knows what's in there. Right, let's lift this bit of polystyrene out then. And there we go, we have the TV itself. Now in an ideal world, you probably have a mate to give you a hand to lift the TV out of the box, but if you're like me, you've got to do it on your own. It can be too hard, it's only a small TV at the end of the day. Span the box round, so it's a little bit easier. And there we go, simple as that. Okie dokie then, we got the TV on the floor now then. Yeah, quite an interesting design. So let's go in for a closer look. And uh, the first thing that stands out to me is uh, these speakers right in the middle. So yeah, bit of a different design there. Now going around the outside of the TV, we can see is the lighting. So the ambilight, and that is what is gonna throw out all that lighting onto the walls above, below, and to either side. And there's something that is looking very positive already, and, and that is a socket for a power cable, which means it's removable, which is great news. Just below that, looks like we've got a button there that's, I'm gonna be presuming, is gonna be to turn the TV on, off, and control some basic menus. So moving across from that, and we've got four screws there, and that'll be to mount any wall mounting brackets. Cut out just below there, that'll be for our tabletop stand. 
Moving across slightly from that, and we have our first lot of inputs and outputs. So we have a connection there for a LAN cable, and satellite and TV antenna. Then we come to our HDMI. So HDMI one is ARC 4K 120. Number two is eARC 4K 120 again. That's great news. Digital audio out and USB one. Moving around to the side of the TV, and we have a further two HDMI's, and HDMI 3 is ARC, and HDMI 4 is ARC, but nothing to indicate that either is 4K 120 compatible. Moving across from that, we have USB 2, service, and USB 3, and finally, a CI card slot. Now, whilst we have this TV on the floor, just want to point something out that may be an issue for some people. And that is the way that this sort of section at the bottom is raised up, as you can see. It's quite a step that we've got there. Now, uh, I'm probably stating the obvious there. Some people might not think about it, but obviously this TV can't really sit flush against the wall due to the fact that you're going to have to have a little bit of a gap to allow that lighting to project onto the surrounding walls. But depending on if you are wall mounting this or not, it could be a bit of an issue if you are going to wall mount this because uh, if your brackets maybe come down quite low, then they could actually hit up against that. So just something to bear in mind. Right, let's crack on then and take a look at the supplied accessories that come in the box. So first up, it's like a plastic piece. I'm guessing that is going to be for the stand. And then again, another metal piece just here. Again, that's well pretty weighty to be fair. And that's gonna be for the stand again. I'll tell you what, that is highly polished. That looks really decent quality, that fair play. Then we have a couple of packets of screws. Again, I'm guessing that's gonna to be to put the stand together. Then we have the stand itself. So let's uh, unwrap this. Oh, that does look really nice. Again, God, that is a solid bit of metal. That is really you can hear that that ain't cheap. Fair play, that's a, yeah, a nice bit of kit and a lovely finish on that. Look at that mirror finish. Looks like some, uh, yeah, some rubber strips there on the bottom. So uh, you're not gonna scratch your tabletop. Next up, we have our quick start guide just there. Then we have this box and inside this, got a bit of paperwork and uh, some batteries for the remote, which are triple A's. Next up, we have what looks like a plastic boomerang, which uh, I'm sure it's not, let's get it out. From what I can tell, that is gonna be a nice cover for that section just there. So you put all your cables in and then cover it up like so. Next up, we have, oh, look at that. A removable power cable, <coughs> LG. Uh, let's uh, undo this and take a measurement. And I'll tell you what, Got some length to it, fair play. So removable and it's coming in at approximately 253 centimeters or just short of a hundred inches. Fair play, that is a nice long power cable and it's detachable. Got to be the best to date. Finally, we come to what's got to be the best thing of the accessories and that is the remote. And I've got no idea what this is going to be like at all. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's really nice. Now, it's quite long looking. Now, if we just crop in a little bit there, go a little bit closer, so we've got the Philips logo going on. And that is, yeah, looking very nice indeed. Let's say a little bit on the long side. Look at that, you know, you could probably do someone some damage if you ain't careful when swinging it around. Shortcuts up the top there. Don't know if that's a button there for, yeah, it looks like a button for Ambilight itself. So uh, shortcuts for Prime Video, Freeview Play, Netflix, Raccoon, yeah, seems to be all going on. And we'll test that out in just a bit. Now, before I attach my wall mount and brackets, just want to give you the measurements between the wall mount and holes just here, which we'll have to take these screws out of in just a minute. And we are looking at from top to bottom is 30 centimeters. And from left to right is 30 centimeters again. Now from the bottom screw hole to the bottom of the TV, we're looking at 11 and a half centimeters. From the top screw to the top of the TV, we're looking at approximately 19 centimeters. And from the screw to the outside of the TV, we are looking at 38 centimeters. Right, as you can see, I've got the wall mount and brackets attached to the back of the TV. So let's get it up on the wall.
Now, before we turn the TV on for the first time, what we need to do is pop the batteries in the remote and uh, got a bit of film there to peel off as well. There we go. And uh, to open this up, we need to slide this. Oh, which way is it? I think just that way. There we go. And reveals the battery compartment. Okie dokie, time for the big switch on then. And I've got to be honest, I have accidentally turned it on and it does look something special. Hence why I've got it on the wide angle. So let's press the power button. There we go, remote lights up and look at that. That looks absolutely mint. It's not actually doing anything, just lighting up, but it still looks smart. Right, so I've just punched in a bit so we can see closer up the setup process for this Philips OLED. And like I said, I've never actually set up a Philips TV before. So uh, yeah, it's all new to me. And I do like that uh, backlit on that remote there. It does uh, look very smart indeed. So anyway, let's crack on then. So we're gonna select English for our language. Now it says to enable voice function, you must first pair your remote control with a TV. Press pair on the remote for three seconds and press OK. So I'm gonna press down on that button for those three seconds. There we go, it was flashing then. And there we are, we are paired. Now we need to connect to our network, be it wired or wireless. I'm on wireless, so I'm gonna click on that. Now I'm searching for Wi-Fi networks. God, see, it looks so nice, doesn't it? With those perfect black levels there, with that glow from that light and just fading in and out, it does look absolutely mint. And this is just the setup process. So I've just put my Wi-Fi password. That is all connected to the internet successfully. Now it does say to sign into Google if you want to, but at this moment in time, I'm just gonna click on skip. Next, I'm gonna to agree to the terms and conditions. Now we've got some more Google services that we can agree to or not agree to, so I'm just gonna click on accept. Now it says Google Assistant, get better voice control for your TV. Now you can sign in, skip, or use Assistant without signing in, which is what I'm gonna select. Now it says search across all your TV apps. To do this, allow Google to share your requests with your TV's apps. So I'm just gonna click on allow. Now it says about install additional apps. We got Red Bull there, not interested in that. Gonna untick and then click on continue. Now it says your Philips TV is powered by Android TV. Let's walk through the features of your device. Get apps from Google Play. The Google Play Store offers apps that you're sure to love. What shows, stream live sports, play games, and more. Talk to Google Assistant. After setup, press the mic button on your remote to quickly find the latest blockbuster. Check the score of the big game or control your TV. Cast to your TV. With Chromecast built in, you can quickly cast photos, videos, and music from your phone straight to your TV. Now it's asking me to select the country. I'm in the UK, so I'm gonna select on that. Notice the TV now, the colors have changed from all those like uh, Google colors, shall we say, to a more solid color. So now we have the option of home use or shop demo. Select home if you install the TV at home or select shop demo if you wanna install the TV in a shop demonstration. So uh, we're gonna go on home use. So some more terms and conditions. Got to sign your life away these days. It is a bit ridiculous, isn't it? It's just a TV, but we've got to agree to all this sort of stuff. Now it says about create a Philips TV and sound account using your email address. Again, we are just signing our lives away with all this stuff. So I'm gonna actually just quickly sign up to this. Now we've moved on to the channels and quick setting. So from here, you can start installing channels. If your TV is connected to the internet, you can receive high quality IP based Freeview Play linear service along with your antenna channels. When you're done installing channels, you can use a quick setting to easily set up up your picture and ambilight. In order to use the voice search feature and keyboard, you need to pair the remote control first. You can always start any of these from the settings menu. So for now, I'm just gonna go on to continue. Now it says updating apps. It does say it can take several minutes, but I'm on what, 1,100 megabits per second download. So uh, yeah, it should go pretty quick, as you can see. Now it says enjoy your TV. Now we're gonna click on finish. And there we go, we are up and running. Right, let's next up take a look at the design of the TV. And uh, to be fair, it does look really nice indeed. If we come round to the side, we can see just how thin it is at the thinnest part. So yeah, if you like a thin TV, 
you ain't gonna get a lot thinner than that. But obviously, as we move down, it does get significantly thicker. Something else worth pointing out is uh, the ambi lights. How far you've got to move around before you actually start seeing them. And I'm pleased to say that, you know, you've got to go really far around to the point that you're not going to be able to see the screen before you actually see those lights. So, you know, you haven't really got to worry about the placement that, you know, if you're sitting at an angle that they're going to be shining off into your face and, you know, ruin the effect. Now, just going in a little bit closer and let's take a look and very thin bezels, looks very nice indeed. But there is something that I don't like about the design, and that's this bit down in the corner. I don't know why manufacturers do this. If you're gonna put something at the bottom of the TV, put it in the middle. Look at it, it just, oh, it just messes with my head when it's set off to the side like that. I think it looks odd. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Do you think that's annoying when it's set off to one side? Personally, like I said, I'd rather have it dead center in the middle. Now there's something else I want to point out to you guys, which I'm sure many people probably don't in their videos about these TVs, and that's this piece of paper that you actually get with it. Excuse it, it's a bit crumpled up. It says, uh, congratulations on your new Ambilight TV. For the best Ambilight experience, place a TV at the recommended distance from the wall. And uh, it's basically got like a tape measure built into it just there. It says, recommended distance to the wall, 10 to 20 centimeters. So if we go to the, uh, the TV just here, and we put that up against it, we can see what distance we are away from the wall. The only thing it doesn't actually make clear is that it says the wall at one end, just there, but this recommended distance, is that to the front of the TV? Is that to the panel just here where my finger is? Is that to the thickest part of the TV there? Is it to the lighting? I don't know, it doesn't actually say, but I'm looking at sort of roughly 10 centimeters. I'm just about falling into that recommended sort of a distance to the lights. So I uh, wish they'd make that a little bit clearer, but as you can see, we're getting a good effect at that sort of distance anyway. Right, let's actually get into this TV then. And uh, what we're gonna do is start first off by looking at some of the menus and uh, what apps this TV has. But uh, I've got to say it, we're only just on this uh, home screen of Sky TV and it looks really, really mint, nice and crisp and sharp. So I'm gonna grab the remote control and press on the home button once. And there we go, we come to our home menu. Now at the top, as we can see, we've got search, home, discover, and apps. What I'm gonna do first is go straight to the apps because I'm always keen to see what actual apps are pre-installed on the TV itself. Now, please bear in mind, I am in the UK, so uh, depending on where you are in the world, those pre-installed apps may differ. So just taking a look down then, and uh, as we can see, we've got Netflix, Prime Video, uh, Apple TV, YouTube, and uh, ones that I'm sure a lot of people from the UK will be looking out for are the following, BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub, Channel 4, or All 4, sorry, and My 5. So great that we've got all those uh, basic UK catch-up services there. Moving on down a bit more there, and uh, STV Player there, you've got UK TV Play. Yeah, absolutely loads of stuff. All the things that I'd expect to really be on a TV at this sort of price point, to be honest. Disney Plus, again, another uh, favorite of mine there. So yeah, a good variety. Now don't worry if the app that you're looking for isn't pre-installed on the TV, because if you go all the way down to the bottom, you will come across find more apps and games, and that will take you to the Play Store. So just going back up to the top of the home menu then, and we're gonna go back over to home there. And if we scroll down, we've got our favorite apps. As we can see, we've got a nice long bar there. And it looks like if we press on the plus that we can add or maybe remove whatever we want or don't want. Scrolling down from that, we've got free view play, stuff that's on now, stuff uh, being advertised there for Netflix, YouTube, BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub, all four, my five, a lot of the apps that we've just actually been looking at. So yeah, just basically trying to suggest uh, content that you may enjoy. But if we go all the way down to the bottom, there is a lot of it as well, I've got to say it. And uh, if it is a little bit too much, you can uh, customize your home screen. So if we click on that, as we can see, we can tick or untick anything that we uh, wish to add or take away. 
Next up, let's take a look at the settings. And uh, it's something I'm sure a lot of you guys are interested in with sort of picture modes and whatnot. And yeah, here we go. Looks like we've got a lot going on just down the side there. So let's start off with the picture settings. So uh, let's uh, highlight that and move on over. So we've got AI picture style there. If we go to that, we've got personal, crystal clear, home cinema, eco, filmmaker mode, game, monitor, expert one, Expert 2 and Kalman. Moving down from that, then we've got Color, OLED Contrast, Sharpness, Black Level, Advanced. Then we have Ambient Intelligence, where we've got Eye Care, Dark Detail Optimization, Color Temperature Optimization. Uh, then we've got Dolby Vision Notification. Now this seems very good indeed, I do like this. So we've got the toggle there for on and off, and it does say just over here, switch on or off the Dolby Vision notification when Dolby Vision content begins to play on your TV. And I do like a TV that actually informs you if you are watching Dolby Vision content or not. But it's nice if you don't want to pop up that you have got that option to turn it off. And then finally, we have our quick picture settings. Now backing out of that, we go down to sound, which we will test out in fine detail uh, a bit later on, and we go through some of the modes but uh, we can see there the different modes available. Then we can opt to where the TV is placed. Again, nice little feature there. So you've got on a stand or on a wall. I've got it on the wall, so uh, I'm gonna click on that. Uh, we've got stuff there for DTS, personalization settings, room calibration. So again, with this, what we can do is click on that and uh, it will utilize the remote controls microphone to uh, listen to a sound that is put out and customize the sound to your viewing environment. Nice little touch. Then moving down from that, then we've got our advanced settings just in there where you find stuff for the eARC as well and Dolby Atmos notification. Once again, notification to let us know if we are listening uh, with Dolby Atmos or not. Next, we come to the Ambilight settings. I've had a quick flip through this menu. It does seem to be quite detailed and we'll actually test the Ambilight function properly uh, in a minute when we put some test footage on. So just uh, moving across, so we've got our different styles then. So we've got a uh, video there, so follow video. We've got standard, natural, sports, vi vivid, and game. Then you've got follow audio. So uh, instead of it changing depending on what's on the screen, this is gonna change depending on the sound, uh, which I think is a, a great little touch there. Then you've got lounge light. So you've got hot lava, you've got deep water. Then we've got fresh nature, warm white, and custom color. Then we've got follow flag. Now this is pretty mad. Look at this, you can pick a, uh, a flag from uh, maybe somewhere that you like or where you live to and uh, click on that and it will uh, change the ambi light. Oh, I think that's a great little touch, something different. Can't say that you'd use it that often, but maybe if you're watching a, maybe a football game or something like that, get your mates around, get them all in the mood. Yeah, something different. So moving down from Ambi Light Style, we have Ambi Sleep. And uh, it says there at the side, Ambi Sleep simulates sunset to help you unwind before you fall asleep. At the end of the simulation, TV will automatically switch to standby. So yeah, got a few settings in there, something a little bit different. Then we have Ambi Light Extension. Now uh, this seems pretty good. So uh, if you've got Philips Hue bulbs, then uh, you can actually pair those up to actually work with this by the seems of it. It says set up your Philips Hue bulb to follow the colors of Ambi Light. So yeah, again, uh, a nice little touch. And then finally we have Advanced. So we've got stuff like there for brightness, saturation, Ambi Light bottom side, brightness bottom side, wall color, TV switch off. So yeah, loads and loads of settings. It isn't just simply like on or off. Right, moving down from Ambilight, and then we have our eco settings. Not really that interested in those, if being totally honest. General settings, so uh, we've got plenty of stuff in here again. I've got to say, it does seem pretty in depth. So uh, yeah, I'll just flip through some of those. You can have a look for yourself. Yeah, quite a bit in there. Regional language, Android settings as well. Universal access there. If you're hearing impaired maybe, you want to turn on uh, stuff for that. Audio description as well. Got child lock, wireless and network. So yeah, if you want to uh, reconnect to the Wi-Fi or connect something up via Bluetooth, you've got settings just there. Your channels, so uh, again, for your installation of any channels, uh, satellite stuff and whatnot. And then finally, settings to do with the software updates. 
Rightio, let's next test out what the picture quality is like on this TV and also give this ambi light a proper test. So as we can see just on this menu just here, we've got the white lights from the ambi light going on. But if you actually take notice, it's trying to uh, replicate the sort of picking out the whites on these thumbnails. But on this one, we've got a bit of blue there. And to be fair, it is throwing a little bit of blue and light out to the side. So uh, yeah, so far so good. So let's press play and see what happens. Right, so uh, one of my videos, as we can see, HDR signal. So we're getting a notification there to let us know that this is in fact HDR content that is being played. So if we can see, we've got white clouds there that are being replicated by the white lights there. We've got the uh, lightness there of the pavement as well coming through on the lighting and uh, the blue at the top from the sky. So uh, yeah, seems to be good, doing a good job. But I tell you what, that picture, that is really, really good. I, I'm quite surprised to be honest. I thought Philips TVs thought, yeah, might not be that great. But I tell you what, that is super sharp really really sharp and I do like a sharp image not everyone does some people think that's a little bit over the top but personally I do now this video was actually just playing in 1080p so I've just changed it up to 4k so it's looking even better again so that just shows how sharp the image is on this tv you know even 1080p was looking pretty mint let's move around to the side and that ambi light is doing a really really good job don't get me wrong there's some areas that aren't perfect. Maybe the color isn't, you know, matching properly, but you know, it's just to give you the effect sort of thing. Like down at the bottom there, sometimes it's, you know, it's doing a good job there. It's, you know, picking up on the same sort of color there, but other times it's not perfect. It will just sort of go off a little bit, but overall, so far, so good. Let's just give you a bit more of a pullback shot so you guys can see the overall effect that we're getting. If I come back over here, Again, we can clearly see that it's picking up on that blue. See that white cloud, how it's like following it around? There we go, that's really good. The whites of the building, just there. It is clever stuff. But at the moment, that series going like a little bit sort of pinky where really it's not like that on screen as such. So it's going a little bit off there. But you know, overall, again, it is a convincing experience. But just getting back to the actual picture itself. Yeah, I gotta say it. I don't think many people would be uh, disappointed with it. This is just my own demo material that I recorded myself. If it can look that good with this sort of content, then when you chuck some, you know, real high quality sort of uh, maybe Blu-rays at it, I imagine this TV will really shine. Right, this next bit of footage should be a really good test. Again, we've got that HDR signal popping up there. So again, this is something that I recorded myself. Should be full of colors bit of a challenge for it but again the image is really really good look at those amazing OLED black levels going on there exactly what you want from a TV like this and that is what OLEDs are all about it's those amazing black levels look at that it's doing a great job those ambi lights there I just move around a little bit to uh that's what it looks like from other angles but picking up on the uh, the yellow there, the white from the ghost, the pink and purple at the side. Yeah, like I said, this is a real challenge for it. But my God, that picture is, I'm absolutely blown away with just how good the picture is on this TV. I've not heard many people really sort of review Philips TVs before, but um, as you guys will know, if you're a follower of the channel, I mainly concentrate on LG and Samsung, but yeah, this is uh, yeah really taking me by surprise, if being totally honest. But I've always said, you know, you, you really can't go far with an OLED TV. You know, you don't matter sort of how cheap or expensive they are, you're still going to get the one thing that everyone wants from an OLED TV. And that's the amazing black levels. Doing a very good job there with the whites coming through. Right, that's doing another great job there, picking up on the yellow there. Again, just look at those black levels. Absolutely mint. Love it. Look at that, that looks spanking. I've got to say, I do think um, once you've had a TV like this, or like myself just demoed it, it's going to seem a bit hard to go back to a conventional TV without this ambi light going on. 
Again, doing a great job there with that ambi light, but the picture, I, I just can't believe how good it really is. I can't wait to test out more TVs from Philips. Okie dokie, for this final part, what we're gonna do is test out the sound. And what I've done is remove my microphone so you can get the overall sense of what it sounds like in a big room. So uh, just gonna turn it up a little bit. So we've got a game going here on the PlayStation. Don't forget, I will be doing a dedicated gaming test with this, with the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Let's turn it up. So I'll tell you what, so far that sounds pretty good. Don't forget, this is only a 48 inch TV as well. This ain't some massive thing. So what have we got to play with? Well, we're looking at a 2.1 channel, 70 watt speaker setup. Now let's just go into the settings and see uh, what other modes are like. And um, we'll change up the sound style. So we've got AI mode there. That's gone a bit quiet. Then original. Not much difference on that. Entertainment. So I think entertainment does sound quite good. Music. Spatial music. Dialogue, which obviously isn't really going to be geared up for this gaming. And then personal. Personally, I think entertainment sounds the best one out of the lot there. Let's really push it. That's max volume there. And yeah, to be fair, that, ooh, nice bit of bass on that as well. Fair play, that sounded pretty good. Don't know how well that came across on camera. But yeah, overall, not a bad sound in TV. Again, considering it's only 48 inches, I would always recommend though, when you're spending this sort of money on a TV, it would probably benefit from a dedicated sound bar at the end of the day. You know, these TVs are still quite thin, so uh, a proper dedicated sound bar will be better than the speakers that you get with this. But you know, if your budget's pushed, then I think that is more than adequate for uh, just general use. Well, there you have it then guys. That was the 800 series. Philips OLED TV with Ambilight. Now, if you do like what you see in this video and you want to pick one of these up, please use my affiliate link in the description for box.co.uk. And again, big shout out to them for sending over this TV for testing. And uh, if you have enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up, really does help the channel out. And if you want to see more testing with this TV, then please make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon because otherwise you won't get notified of my latest uploads. So thanks very much for joining me today and hopefully I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.